Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 60368, Arctic Explorer Ship from the LEGO City theme. This set contains 815 pieces, 7 minifigures, as well as a molded whale figure, and it retails for $159.99 in the US, or $149.99 in most places in Europe. This set was sent to me for review by the LEGO Group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. So here's the main build of the Arctic Explorer ship, of course, the ship itself, and this thing is massive. This is my first time ever getting a Lego boat that uses like these giant molded pieces, but if you've never seen it before, yeah, the entire hull of this boat is made up of two parts, a front section and a back section. It's essentially like a base plate, but instead of being entirely flat, it's in the shape of the body of the boat, and I have to say, that's actually really cool. Obviously not as detailed as something like the Destiny's Bounty from Ninjago, because it is just all flat on the sides, but it still feels accurate to real life ships and just leaves so much room for displaying minifigures and whatnot. And there's a lot of stuff going on in this boat, so let's take a look at everything up a little bit closer. Starting at the front end of the ship, this side's a little bit more pointy than the back. We also have our one and only bit of detail on the side of the ship. This sticker right here, which has the set's number on it. The deck of the front is very open, so much room to pose figures, just so many studs all over the place. And that's the case with most of the set, there's just so much room to pose many figures. You could fit so many more beyond just what comes in the set. There's this platform right here with all lights on it, and that's of course the helipad for the helicopter and the set to land on. We'll take a look at the helicopter build itself in a moment, but yeah, that just slides in really nice like that and sort of locks into place. It does obstruct the view of the person driving the ship a little bit, which is a bit strange, but I don't think that's the biggest deal in the world. Moving back behind that, here's the area where the captain actually controls the ship. There's three seats in there, and we'll take a look inside in just a moment. But looking at it from the outside, I absolutely love this design. You can see there's the logo for the explorers out the front right here. That logo is used in multiple sets this wave. But I love the pieces they use for the windows. You can see they're alternated where the one at the front is just connected on normally, but the ones on the sides are actually upside down. But that doesn't feel out of place or anything. It all goes together quite nicely, and is honestly a super unique shape for a LEGO City set. Because LEGO City sets are usually a lot blockier than sets from other themes, and while that is still the case with this set, I don't know, the shaping at this part in particular is actually really good. But if you actually want access into this part of the build, it's very easy to do. Just take off this orange section right here, and taking a look inside, I think there's actually a good bit of space in here. There's those three seats that I mentioned. You can see two of them have, like, these printed computer screen pieces. Those two prints are different, however, they also match these prints at the front right here. And yeah, the front seat has those same two computer screens as well as a classic LEGO steering wheel piece. And I'm not sure how well you guys can see it, but there's also a printed LEGO compass piece in there to just help the captain of the ship keep track of where they are. But yeah, the actual space in here is pretty great. You can see now I have all three seats filled with minifigures in the set, as well as just a character standing right here talking to the captain or whatever. And there's still studs left open if you want to pose even more figures in here. Of course, that's far from the only interior in this ship, but I love that this part in particular is so spacious. But now if we want to see more of the inside, we have to take more pieces off. So we can remove the helicopter platform right here, as well as this room behind it. And now we can see the interior that's actually inside the hull of the ship. At the very front of the ship, there's a tiny little sleeping quarter that has two beds. The builds of these beds are incredibly simple. It matches what we've come to expect from LEGO City, but having recently built the new Destiny's Bounty, I don't know, this feels especially simple in comparison. There's a trans yellow piece in the corner, I guess, to be a bedside lamp, as well as a matching one on the other side, and then behind the beds is a little desk that holds a silver mug. I guess just to be a drink for one of the cabin members. Now moving past the beds, I'm struggling a little bit to find an angle that captures this well on camera. But you can see there's this tank right here, which actually has a crab inside. It's the classic Lego crab piece in red, and then there's like one of the teal minion hair pieces in the back, I guess to be some sort of sea life or rocks. And I'm not sure if this is meant to be a crab for eating or a crab that's just being kept as a pet, but it is still a quite cool inclusion. Next to that, there's a little chair as well as a desk with a microscope build on top. The set also comes with what seems to be a printed petri dish piece. I believe that came in sets earlier this year, maybe from Lego Friends, though I'm not positive on that. But yeah, I don't believe that's a new print for this set. However, it doesn't seem to be super common. The microscope builds nothing all too crazy, but it's very clear what it's supposed to be. And then that's about it for the interior on this set. Around the back, though, you can see there's a table and two chairs, or I guess that's a table. It's literally just one 2x4 brick, but that's LEGO City for you. As well as a stickered piece behind it, which seems to have some sort of radar on it. Then coming to the other side, there's a coffee machine as well as another mug. And then a chair in front of a computer. You can see there's a printed keyboard piece on the desk right there. And that computer screen's a stickered part, and it looks like it's meant to be connected to a camera feed, which is detecting, like, what's outside of the ship. And you can see it's showing an image of the treasure chest, which is actually the side build in the set, which we'll see in a little bit. And actually, based off the robot arms on the side, this looks like it's meant to be the submarine drone in the set, which is another one of the side builds. And then the final part of the interior is these double doors that open up, and inside, of course, we have a bathroom. I feel like LEGO includes bathrooms in a lot of their sets nowadays, and this has to be one of the simplest ones I've seen. Just a cylinder piece to represent toilet paper and a very basic seat. But yeah, that's very clear that's supposed to be. And there you go, there's all the interior in the hull of the ship. Again, I love how spacious this is, you can easily fit the entire crew in here. But I also like how there's exactly four chairs, because the set comes with seven minifigures total. So you can have three minifigures, including the captain, up with the captain, and then the other four in here, and then all the minifigures have a seat to sit in. 
in. So if you imagine the boat going through like a rainstorm or whatever and the entire crew needs to get inside, it's very easy for them to all find somewhere to fit. Unfortunately, there's only two beds and not seven. Seven would have been cool, but that would have taken up a lot of space, so I get why it's only two. And two is definitely better than nothing at all. And then finally, one more thing at the very back, you have these doors that open up to the next part of the ship. And now reconnecting the pucks of the ship that I removed. And moving the ship back a bit, we can actually take a look at that section. I like these giant triangular pieces here. They're very bright and flashy, but I don't know. I think they're fun. There's more stickered parts here with that Explorer Team logo on it. And here's where those doors actually open up into. We have this giant crane in the center of the ship, and there's just room for the minifigures to walk around behind that. There's also a ladder here, which leads to more doors. And if you open these up, this, of course, leads to the control area of the ship, which we already looked at. This is a small thing, but I really like how every area of the ship can actually be accessed in real life. Like, a lot of times, LEGO doesn't have enough space for all of this, so you just sort of take things apart and just imagine the characters can get from place to place. But no, I like how there's actual doors on the sides for the minifigures to get around, but then the roofs and stuff still come off to make it easier for us to actually access the rooms. I know the set overall is very simple, but I don't know, this makes it feel a little bit more realistic. But now that we're on the latter half of the ship, that was the more interesting side. All of this is a lot more simple, but that doesn't make it bad by any means. Starting off by taking a look at the robot arm right here, this has a full 360 spin, which is really nice. Of course, it's a bit restricted by, like, what gets in the way. But yeah, you definitely can still spin it all the way around if you want to. Hanging off of it, you can see this is that summer Ranger on side build that I mentioned before, and you can see it connects on with just this hook on a string. You can lower that string down by spinning these gears at the back, and you can also extend the robot arm out further if you want to. It's really interesting actually the way this is done. I'm not seeing these pieces used all too often. But yeah, you just pull out on this and it gets longer. Once you've got the robot arm extended, it does still stay locked in place, so you don't have to worry about this sliding or whatever. But yeah, that just gives you an even larger range of motion with this, which I actually think is pretty cool. I prefer the shorter robot arm just because I don't think all this is necessary, but it is an option you have if you want. And if you want to transform it back, yeah, it's super easy to do. Just push it back in like this. But then, of course, you have to reel back the string to match the newer, shorter arm. There's a little bit of brick-built paneling on the side of the ship, and that's just to cover up the break between the two sections, because you can see these are actually two separate parts right here that just connect together at the middle. Definitely looks a bit awkward like this, but this does more than enough to cover it up. And then you can see there's just like this large flat section where you can display minifigures if you want. But what this section actually is are doors that open up. So if you pull these open just like this, you can see inside there's just a giant hole. That's, of course, to give the bow actual access into the ocean, so if you want to drop the submarine in, you can have the robot arm lower into the gap like this. And then when you're ready to bring it back, it's very easy to do so just by going the opposite way. Now, supposedly this boat can actually float. I've not tested it myself, but it does say that in the box. So you can actually use that to lower stuff into the water, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I actually quite like that functionality. And then coming to the very back right here, it's mostly just more platform space. There's a smaller boat, a dinghy, which just rests right here and is very easy to remove if you want to. And that just opens up to another large area. But yeah, this backside doesn't have a ton going on. It's mostly just places for the crew to walk around, which I think is good. It's what a ship should be. But I just don't have too much to comment on. It's large and it has a ton of space, but that's most of what there is to this section. So as such, I think that's about it for the main boat build of the set. However, of course, there's quite a few side builds, as well as the molded animal and the minifigures to look at. So now let's take a look at those. So the first side build in the set is that helicopter that we looked at before. And I mean, this is cute. It's solid. Far from the best LEGO helicopter I've ever seen, but that doesn't make it bad. I like how it has the inflatable landing gear to show that this is an ocean helicopter specifically. That's a fun touch. But yeah, it is definitely very gappy. You've got some ugly sections. So it does make for like a cute, fun toy, but I don't know. I just don't have a ton to say on this one. The windshield, of course, can open up at the front. And there's how many figure looks actually riding inside. But yeah, I don't have a ton else to say on this one, like a fun extra inclusion, but far from the best looking build I've ever seen. Very similar thing with the dinghy, like I like that it's here, but it's only a few parts. You can see the base of the boat is just one big molded piece, steering wheel at the front, and then seats for two minifigures. The lights on the side are a nice touch, I guess, but yeah, I really don't have too much else to say on this one. It's good for what it wants to be. Unlike the helicopter, I don't think this could be any better, because it is just meant to be a basic simple boat, and I believe this one actually is supposed to float as well. But yeah, I don't have too much to say on that one either. Then here's the underwater submarine drone, and this one I actually really like. It's quite similar to a build in another set, the one that came with like the turtles and the stingray, but I like that consistency because it is supposed to be the same explorer group in both of those sets. But yeah, it's got two little robot arms on the side with the claw hands on it so I can actually pick up accessories. And you can see those claw hands match the stickered piece of the computer screen that's supposed to be a camera feed of this drone. A little propeller out the back that allows it to actually swim and move forward. And then of course there's a hole at the top to allow it to be picked up by a crane. Yeah, for a little build, I think it's quite solid. I like it. And then the final build in the set is a bit of ocean terrain, and it seems to be actually a part of a sunken Viking 
sinking ship, which is super cool. There's a major part of the ship coming out of the ground right here, and you can see it's actually angled. You can move it up if you want. Not sure why you'd want to, but that option is there. As well as a smaller bit on the opposite side of the treasure chest. We've got a bit of kelp growing out behind that chest. And then we, of course, have the actual treasure chest in the center. This is like the newer Lego Minecraft slash Lego Harry Potter chest piece in gunmetal gray. Not sure if we've gotten it in that color yet. Definitely not in Lego Minecraft, but I'm not sure if Harry Potter had that. But certainly a neat color for it. I do like how that looks. And if you open that up inside, you can see there's a Viking shield. No printing, unfortunately. Would have been cool, but not a huge deal. As well as a Viking axe. And then out in front of the chest, there's a little bit more treasure. You can see there's a crab right here, and he's wearing a Viking helmet. Now this helmet part, to my knowledge, I believe is actually all new for this set, which is actually really cool. Because they definitely didn't need to make this, right? The point of this set is the ship, but the Viking treasure just feels like an extra bonus. So getting an all new molded part, and one that's so good too, is actually really impressive. Obviously the minifigures in the set aren't Viking, so the helmet doesn't fit them perfectly, but even just looking at that, the helmet looks so cool on an actual minifigure. Really curious to see where LEGO uses this in the future, because yeah, it's great. But you can see underneath where the helmet was kept, there's just a little red crab. And he's got cylinder piece on top of his head, and that's of course where the helmet connects. So yeah, overall this is a fantastic side build, complements the ship really well, and just leads to so much fun play. Very well done. But then we get to my personal favorite part of this set, and that is the all-new molded whale piece, and this guy is so much fun. First off, I love the way they did his face. The eye design is adorable, and then he's got like this little smile right here. And then the mouth can also be hinged open, similar to like Lego sharks and whatnot. And because this figure is so big, you can actually fit quite a bit in his mouth. For example, a minifigure can't fit all the way in, but their legs at the very least can. But yeah, even fairly large pieces could go in there, and then you can have the orca just close its mouth up. I know I always loved doing that with like the big shark figures when I was a kid, so having another animal that can do that is so much fun. And it was just translated perfectly, right? This is very similar to real life whales. Dull molded in black and white, which is so cool. Like there's no printing used here except for the eyes. The orca does have a blowhole at the top of his head, which is a fun touch. But something kind of interesting is the blowhole is also an accessory hole. It's the same size as like the holes in Lego Friends characters hair pieces. So basically any accessory that goes onto Lego Friends figures can also fit onto the orca. Like for example, here's this crown piece. Obviously this doesn't come in this set. I'm just showing you it as an example. But there you go. Look how silly that is. I love so much that that's there. Just so many options to make this guy look extra goofy. There's two studs on the orca's back to keep this guy feeling Lego-like, which I really appreciate. And then the fin actually has a bar at the back, so that way you can attach accessories or have a minifigure actually hold on to it, which again just opens up to more customizability. And then really great mold for the tail at the back too. Yeah, this guy is near perfect in my opinion. A shame he's kept exclusive to such an expensive set, but he is the perfect figure to get here. I'm really happy that Lego is making so many more molded animals now, and I can't wait to see what else they come up with in the future because yeah, they're just so much fun. So now moving to the minifigures, here are the first two in this set we have who I believe is meant to be the captain and the leader of the expedition, as well as one of the divers. Now this wave of LEGO City does something very interesting because even though this isn't a story-based theme such as Ninjago or Monkey Kid or whatever, there's still a consistent cast of characters that comes in like all the different expedition sets for this wave, and I believe this set comes with every single one of them. So all the characters you see in this set also come in other sets as well, maybe in different outfits, but they are the same characters across all the sets, which I actually think is really neat. It helps add to like the implied story of everything. Something else interesting is I was expecting a lot of these minifigures to use the same torsos and leg prints and everything. And while there is a little bit of overlap when it comes to leg printing, I believe every minifigure actually has a unique torso print in this set. Again, in other sets, other figures may use those same prints, but I think it's really cool how all the outfits go together yet are made to be their own thing. So starting with these first two minifigures, I really love the design of the captain guy. Of all the figures, he's the one who features white most prominently in his design with like this sort of scarf piece. I believe it was originally used for the penguin in the Lego Batman movie, but it kind of just implies like a fluffy winter jacket, especially with the printing on his torso too, and perfectly encapsulates the vibes of like Arctic expedition. I'm not sure how they feel about his face print. I mean, I like the beard and everything, but I feel like his expressions may be a little bit intense, though I suppose that works for Lego City. And then he also just has the sleepy head hairpiece in reddish brown. Then removing his hairpiece, taking a look at his back face print, unfortunately no back face print at all. And then removing that like fluffy white neck attachment, there's a full look at that back torso print, as well as a better look at his front torso print too, where you can see he's got like an orange sweater on underneath his jacket. Yeah, I actually really like the design of this minifigure. Face print and everything is whatever, but I love the jacket and the neck attachment. Makes for the perfect like expedition leader in my opinion. And then here we have a diver. Now this exact diving suit comes in quite a few sets this wave, however this is the only one of the diving suit in this set, and I think it looks good. I feel like the dark blue doesn't fit this color scheme as well as some of the other colors in the main color scheme for these guys, but it helps set the diving suit apart from the other outfits. And I really like the molded helmet they use here. You can see it connects to the classic space Lego air tanks on the back in orange, and then removing all that there's a better look at the torso print, the face print, as well as the back torso print. You can see there's a metallic silver zipper around the back, and then this minifigure also does come with an alternate hairpiece which is just the Draco 
the Malfoy hair and blonde. Not the biggest fan of this face print either, but again, it's fine. I like the rest of this figure, and I'm happy you get at least one diver in this set. Both of these figures are quite good. Here are the next two minifigures in this set, and I actually really like both of these. This woman on the left, I believe, is supposed to be the helicopter pilot, and then the guy on the right is meant to be the driver of the dinghy. The helicopter pilot, though, just has a lot of great parts to her. I really love the blue and white color combination that both of these two use. Obviously, they still have the orange that most of the explorers have, but it's a lot less prominent on these two figures. The helicopter pilot has an amazing face print. I feel like it's one of LEGO's best just generic female faces. And the hairpiece they gave her is great, too. It's the Monica Rambeau hairpiece, but in, like, nougat instead, which is a really fun recolor. I believe it's been coming in sets for a little bit now, but still quite nice to see. Then removing that hairpiece, there's a better look at that face print, as well as turning around, there's a look at her alternate face, which she does have, where she just has a much wider smile. Then the dinghy driver uses the Ninjago Movie Cole hairpiece, which is nice to see that that's still coming in sets. And then he also has an orange life vest on, of course, in case he falls off the dinghy. But when you remove that life vest, you can see it's actually revealed that he's also the medical personnel in this ship, because he has, like, a stethoscope on him, as well as this little monitor in one pocket. You can see the design of these two torsos is very similar, but they are slightly different, and I love seeing that variation. It's like they're the same exact outfits, but these two customize them with different accessories. Face print, I think, is quite nice, too. You can see he's got a bit of facial hair, which I feel like helps differentiate him from other minifigures in this set. And turning him around, unfortunately, no alternate face. However, I think that's okay, because, again, it's a LEGO City set. We don't get alternate faces all too often, but all around, these two are both quite good. Here are the next two minifigures, two more members of the crew. This one seems to be a photographer because he comes with a camera piece, and he's also meant to go out in the dinghy because he also comes with a life vest. And then this character, I'm not sure what her exact role is supposed to be, she just comes with a walkie-talkie, but I suppose she's just meant to be like general crew for the ship. The face print on this guy was introduced earlier this year, and I think it's really good. It's a bearded face with glasses, which is something we don't see all too often. The smile's maybe a little bit wide, but again, it works for LEGO City in my opinion. Really great hairpiece on him too, it was the one introduced for Star-Lord T'Challa in the LEGO Marvel minifigure series, and I'm happy to see it's coming on just generic minifigures now. And very similar with the female character. I think that's a really good face print, just a good general expression with a slight smirk. And then the hairpiece is a recolor of one from Lego Hidden Side. And with the hat on top, it fits like the vibe of Arctic Explorers. Taking the hairpieces off, you can see the female minifigure does have an alternate face where she's winking, but no alternate face for the male figure, unfortunately. There's the back torso prints as well, where you can see there's slight variation. The male figure has a little bag around his back. And then removing the life vest at the front, there's a look at the two torso prints. Again, very similar, but they are slightly different, though they both share that same exact leg print. And then the final minifigure in the set, I believe, is meant to be a mechanic because she comes with a wrench as her accessory. And this figure rules. I absolutely love her hairpiece. It's the same one that Empress Beatrix and Ninjago has, but in dark red instead. That's just such a fun color for that part, and fits this minifigure perfectly. Just a single-sided face with a happy smile, but that makes sense because a double-sided face would show through the back. And then her torso print, again, is similar to all the others, but she's got, like, this really nice blue jacket on. I love how asymmetrical it is, too, just sort of leaned off to one side. While keeping the same color scheme, it helps her stand out from the others. Yeah, this is another really good minifigure, probably my second or third favorite in this entire set. I'm quite happy with this one. Oh, and also, one quick addition, the photographer comes with this alternate hat piece to keep him warm. That's just a very nice part to get, I love how that looks. And then one final thing, I mentioned this set comes with every crew member. I was actually wrong about that. It's missing exactly one. There's this character that comes in a few other sets. However, she does not come in this set. So you will need to get at least one other set if you want the entire crew. But there you go. There is everything in the Arctic Explorer ship. So overall, what are my thoughts on this set? I honestly had a lot of fun with this set. At first, the price for the set seems really bad. Only 800 pieces for $160. But having it in hand, I will say, it definitely feels like the price they're charging. Because even though there's not a ton of pieces in this set, the pieces you do get, a lot of them are massive. I mean, compare this to something like the Destiny's Bounty from Ninjago, the entire hull of this ship is two pieces. And as such, that makes this bigger than the Destiny's Bounty. So would I recommend this set? I mean, I think it depends on who you are. If you're looking for an amazing building experience and a super detailed build, the set's not for you. It is very simple in a lot of places. But if you're just looking for a fun toy and you don't mind a simpler build, I think it is actually really good. For kids especially, I think this is great because it's a big set, but not a complex set. So it should be easy for young kids to build. But for older collectors, that doesn't make this a bad set. This isn't a four plus set, right? Like it still looks nice. And you get a great selection of minifigures, some cool accessories such as like that Viking stuff underwater, and then of course the absolute highlight of the set, the whale. So I guess it depends on what you're looking for. Obviously not for everybody, but if you want a simpler build that's a ton of fun to play with and has so much room to pose figures, this might be the set for you. But of course, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!